Okay, welcome everybody to the new ELEC 1013-21 winter course, network cabling. That's um, that's our uh, that's our agenda for the next 14 weeks. Uh, as you notice, there were no in-person labs this week because of the restrictions, and we're starting the in-person face-to-face labs um, starting this coming Monday, which is going to be, what is that day going to be here? It's going to be 18th, January 18th. Um, the first lab, though, if there was no uh, there was no face to face interaction, but you still get to do lab one, and I hope everybody found their way to uh, to the uh, to the lab instructions, and I'm going to go over them today as well, just so you uh, you're not hanging in the air. But let's uh, take care of some things first. Um, <laughs> All right, let's just bring up the uh, the class portal. But before I do that, I'm going to have a sip of mm, instant coffee. All right, um, okay. All right, so here is our class portal and all the important stuff and sometimes some things not as important i'm going to place in the announcement section so as soon as you open the class portal you're going to see the announcements and that's how i'm going to communicate with everyone uh, for the first week or so i'm going to send emails as well because we have some new people joining in uh, so they just get get used to the rhythm of our class uh, so, uh, this is the announcement of today's lecture, what else, our YouTube playlist, all the, um, all the uh, classes and labs I'm going to uh, include in this YouTube, so if there's any new videos, just visit that link, and uh, you're going to uh, see the playlist of all that we have recorded. I'm recording all the lab, uh, labs uh, instructions and all the lectures, so this thing here is being recorded. Uh, all right, uh, now, lab subsection, we're going to go over that. Uh, week one theory and lab. So, okay, so that was the you know, and welcome message. So I can read that. Now, this there's updated course plan. So if you go to content, and if you go to the course outline, you're going to see two kind of windows here. First is the, uh, the course outline, and here's the course plan. You can view this thing in this little sub window, or you can download that in PDF and you can keep it in your files just to see what's going on. So we're going to uh, go over that a little bit here. Uh, of what, I'm just going to bring the bigger version of that so we don't see it in the small window. Let me just give me just a couple seconds here. Uh, they have that. Yeah. Here's the course plan. Okay. So network cabling like 1013, 21 winter, electric code techniques, LT1. Uh, uh, da, 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 56 hours because 14 weeks. Uh, in this course, students working individually in teams uh, will follow the given scope of work. Uh, documents and submit the deliverables uh, that integrate the key concept of the network and otherwise telecommunications structured wiring to demonstrate the combination of the blah 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 basically i'm going to uh, give you as much as i can uh, of the stuff that i think that you need um, if you want to continue uh, if you want to get a career in uh, in the structured cabling. Now, structured cabling is um, is a very vast field. Now, um, as we introduce each other with Mr. Cunningham, uh, that uh, he's the uh, weekend, uh, he does the weekend course. Uh, it's a funny way that we introduce each other. So uh, he's almost as good as I am, and I am almost as good as he is. We both have over 30 years experience in this field. And still, there are some things that 
he has done and I haven't, and still there are some things that I have done and he hasn't. So there is a, there's a lot to uh, to cover. There would not be enough two years. Two, two years would not be enough for me to get to give you everything that is possibly that uh, that there is to give. But I'll give you some basics, and I'll give you some good base to start. And if somebody wants to continue, um, just uh, you know, contact me in any way you want. Uh, well, email is the best. I see a question here um, in submissions. There is lab one. When is it due? Yeah, we'll cover that. Haven't seen the YouTube lab yet. Oh, the lab one, it is on YouTube, but I'll show you. Okay, uh, don't worry about it. Yeah. So where were we? Okay, just a bit of a background on uh, how, uh, uh, what is what this course is about. Well, <clears throat> lab two is already on YouTube. We're going to make this kind of a link, and this is an RJ45 or Ethernet link on one side, and it is terminated on the other side. All right, this is that's that's the whole thing that this thing is about. Now, this goes into the uh, communications room where all the wires are kind of home running to one spot. And this other end goes everywhere else. It could be under the desk uh, for the computer, uh, or maybe one or two or three jacks could be under the desk, could be over the desktop, could be in the ceiling, could be everywhere. So anything that is um, intelligent, uh, like a computer or wireless access point, or maybe some alarm or camera surveillance, it's all running on this, right? So if you look, uh, you know, if you Google map and you just open the street view and you see all the buildings downtown, well, there is millions of those in those buildings. So the jobs are there. And the, the, uh, the key idea is to oh, know how to do it and uh, know how to do it efficiently yeah, and safely. Right? Uh, so yeah, the jobs are there. Now we're going to uh, take you uh, through various aspects of what's involved in the business, including the documentation that is supposed to be prepared. So um, there are two things I'm going to tell you. One thing is uh, stick with me here, learn everything as much as possible of what I'm going to give you, because you know chances are that probably with the technology that is evolving right now around the data and communication um, and communications, uh, I would say there will be a 90% chance that you are actually going to end up in some sort of business that is related to this. Right? Um, so if you stick with me and learn everything that's possible, you're going to get a good mark. So that's one reason. The other reason is, that I'm going to tell you that if you're going to get, and chances are that you're going to get into business that has to do with that, uh, you will probably, uh, um, well, for sure, you're going to use a lot of the stuff that I'm going to give you here, okay? So just be good. Well, that's all I'm going to say with, the, with this here. Nice hat, who's that? Oh, Mr. Cunningham. <laughs> The hat is good, but what the heck is up with this thing? It's backwards, right? Can you give me a hat that's not backwards? <laughs> actually, this is actually a good hat because uh, uh, I know, I'm filming myself through a mirror. Right? Anyways, all right, so let's just take a quick look at what the course is uh, involving here. Now, um, oops, I should, uh, all right, so you can just read this. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. This is in the course plan. Uh, academic uh, calendar. I just gave you the link to academic calendar because sometimes this calendar is updated. So instead of me posting the calendar, I'll give you a link. So you click on that. You have to be logged in. You click on this link. Uh, you're going to get the uh, calendar here. Now, grading. How is this course this year being graded? Uh, as you notice, there is no final exam this year. However, the tests are going to be, instead of two quizzes and two tests and final exam, as it was in the past years, we're going to have four tests, okay? We're going to have 10 labs. Um, and each lab, so if, if, if you don't know, uh, if you're not sure how much of each lab is worth or how much each test is worth, just go to that course plan and it's 
probably the well, second page right there, grading. So labs, all the labs are worth 45% of the course. And all the evaluation, which is the tests, one, two, three, four, they are all together, they are worth 55% of this course, okay? Now, uh, each lab is worth 4.5%, 10 labs. Each test is worth 13.75%. So it's pretty simple of the whole course, okay? Now, labs. Uh, first lab is the deliverables, and we're going, I'm going to explain to you what is involved. Second uh, week, um, well, weeks. So weeks two and three, we're going to do two labs. However, because we are splitting the group, because we are not allowed to have more than 10 people in a classroom, so uh, we have to split the section. So section one, for example, is going to be section 1A, section 1B, section two, section uh, 2A, section 2B. So uh, the first week, uh, uh, well, the first week, because the lab is online, so uh, we could get everybody to perform that lab. Now, week two, only the A subsections show up. Week three, only the B subsections show up. Right? And during one sec one lab session, we're going to perform two labs. Now, <clears throat> because the labs are quite straightforward, the previous years, uh, uh, a lot of people were finishing them uh, ahead of time, but that was including also the demonstration that I had to do before the lab starts. So that would be you know, 20 minutes to half an hour sometimes. Okay. Now, we are running out of time as far as, um, because of the COVID, we have to split sections. So everybody comes in every two weeks. So, but don't worry, you're going to have your time filled up. Because for example, and Mr. Cunningham, you're gonna laugh at me, but that's okay, I'll take it. <laughs> if you notice the first lab that I'm talking about, I'm talking about uh, how to terminate uh, cat 5 e jack. Yeah, I'm talking about terminating cat 5 e jack. And I'm talking about it for about uh, an hour and 20 minutes. So, uh, well, this is just the first lab demonstration I'm giving you. It's a bit longer because uh, I'm explaining some basics that have to do with the, something that's called insulation displacement connection. Uh, so the next consecutive lab, I'm not going to have to explain all that. So we're going to, you have to watch the first one. Just get a good coffee and, uh, and, uh, and, and just go through it. There's a lot of valuable information that you are going to use for sure uh, uh, in, uh, in, the, in, in the field. And that helps you understand everything else. So the next consecutive lab, I'm going to do lab three, uh, right after this, uh, this uh, uh, lecture session, uh, it's going to be much shorter. So don't worry, not all the lab demonstrations on YouTube are going to be an hour and a half long. It was just the first one, all right? Uh, okay, so we're going to perform two labs each session. You are going to have to watch those videos that I'm going to, we're going to produce um, in order to be prepared. There is not going to be that much time for me to go through the basics of that lab. Those basics are going to be explained on those videos, on those demonstration videos. Then uh, when you come to class, you're not going to be so green. You will know exactly what you'll be doing. And uh, what we instructors are going to do is just going to walk around and do the corrections. Uh, you know, here's this thing, do it that way, not that way, put your hand this way. Um, uh, this is why you do this, this is why you do that. All right, so that's going to be much more efficient. So we're not going to lose the, or lose the time. We're not going to use the time in the beginning of the lab to explain how things are done. All right, but you have to be prepared. You have to watch those labs, uh, lab demonstration, okay? So, um, uh, the first, uh, the first uh, two labs are going. We're going to terminate the jack that was called 110 type of platform, uh, and 110 is a type of a punch down system. 110 has nothing to do with any sort of a number. It's just how the platform of 
the, the, the way of connecting is, uh, is called, it's called 110. Another way is uh, there for telephone, but this is mostly for data, 110. Uh, for telephones, uh, we use, in Canada, we use the BIX system, B-I-X, and in the States, most of the time, they are using the old, old 66 system. Now, uh, just notice again, the system is named 66. Uh, the the punch down system for uh, for data is called 110, and the states is also using 110 for data. For telephones, in the states they're still stuck in the 66 blocks, uh, and uh, in Canada we are using the Bix blocks. We're going to cover both of those platforms. Now, uh, then, then the next slide is going to be toolless. So it's also isolation displacement connection, except it's uh, the jack is a little bit different. You do not need any additional punch down tools in order to make a connection. The jack is sufficient within itself to make the connection by itself. All right, so both systems are available on the market and sometimes you get to deal with this and sometimes you get to deal with the other. All right, now uh, labs four and five, uh, sorry, weeks four and five, we're going to deal with the termination of uh, T568 plug. And this is basically the computer plug. Um, one of those, okay? The one that you the one that you use for plugging in the computer. Okay, that's the jack. Plug. And the jack is a jack. All right. So the plug goes into the plug, into the jack. Just like that. Right. So we will learn how to terminate these properly, and we will learn how to proper terminate these properly, and what these guys are about, and what to watch for, and how to troubleshoot those damn things. All right, okay, uh, let's keep going with the introductions. Um, now, then we're going to uh, uh, learn how to use different type of connections. There are different type of terminals and terminations. There are insulation displacement termination, there are screw terminals, there are uh, there are compression connectors, and we're going to learn one of those. So if you use, if you learn how to uh, use properly two or three of those, you'll get the idea. And if you get any different type of connector, you'll basically use the same basis of the base of knowledge, and you can just apply it in a different way as far as the connector is uh, concerned. Okay. Now week six, uh, that is the family day. All right, Monday is the family day. And since uh, section one and two, I think, uh, are, um, uh, are on Monday, uh, we won't be able to accommodate all of us. So I just made an open lab. And all, during the open lab, um, you basically look at this lab schedule. And if you have any labs that you have to make up, just uh, you can make up those labs during those open lab sessions, okay? Uh, and you can join any section, providing that uh, you need to uh, send us an email. And uh, um, how do you know where we are? Email. If you look at the course portal over here, uh, in the beginning here, you see the instructors. Mr. Bach is me, and Mr. Kyle Crouch, and Mr. Tim Schisler. Um, that's the uh, that's the emails. You can just email us and let us know that you're coming, okay? Because we need to make sure that we have no more than ten people attending the labs. Okay? All right, keep going here. Where are we? There's my PDF. There's my lab here. Then um, lab six, week seven and eight. Uh, I have designed that uh, decided that basically we're going to do that one lab during that week. We're going to terminate 25 pair cable onto a Bix uh, platform. And that lab usually takes a little bit longer. So uh, we have designated all two hours for that lab. Okay. Now, uh, then we're going to terminate the patch panel. We're going to learn about the coaxial cable, terminate that. Uh, and then we'll go to do with the optical fiber, the fiber optics. And we are going to demonstrate how mechanical splice is done and what the, what's the idea behind that. And also we're going to uh, demonstrate uh, what the fusion splice is about and what's the, uh, how to do this, okay? 
Now, uh, that's as far as the labs and weeks 13 and 14. Uh, that's going to be open lab again. So the whole two weeks reserved for the open labs. Uh, my uh, advice to you is, uh, even though you're going to have open labs so you can make up the labs, uh, please do not reserve those uh, open lab sessions. Do not plan to have those labs done in the open labs because there's always something that happens. And if you, uh, if you have too many labs to make up, you just might not be able to do them. Plus you get uh, deductions, smart deductions. So uh, you don't get 100% when you make up the lab. Um, yeah. And making up the lab doesn't mean that uh, you wanna, you have done a lab and you want a better mark. No, once you've done, done the lab, you've done the lab. Uh, if you haven't done the lab at all because of whatever circumstances, and uh, there could be different ones, uh, depending on that, uh, we might deduct the marks or not. I have put uh, in the course outline that uh, we're going to deduct 25 marks right off the bat. But you know what? Uh, that depends on the circumstances, okay? All right, so that's the labs. Let's see the lectures here. Uh, theory schedule, okay? So today we're going to have the, uh, uh, well, it's, as it's happening right now, and I have put the dates here. Okay, um, uh, all right, what did it say here? I can say Tyler here. Last year we finished labs up in this class in like 30 minutes. Two labs will be pretty easy. Yes, uh, that's correct. Okay, um, yeah, well, it depends on the lab. All right, so we'll go back to the, to the schedule here. Um, would, would getting wisdom teeth removed be an excuse? I don't know. Talk to me after you have the wisdom teeth removed. See how smart you are then. <laughs> All right. Um, I have done. I have, I've had them removed. Okay. And I'm still pretty smart. That's what my mom tells me. Anyways. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so uh, the next uh, week two, okay, so deliverables is week one. So we're going to cover this, a little bit of a safety thing, and the deliverables. We're going to cover some uh, ideas of what uh, was the idea behind that. Then uh, in week two, notice that we have two hour sessions. So we're going to have part one and part two, all right? So network types, we're going to talk about types of the network and uh, uh, the net, uh, network topology. And that's what's going to, we're going to talk about the topology of the network. So, all right. um, so that's the, the next uh, two hours uh, next week. Uh, and then uh, we're going to tackle the POTS, which stands for plain all telephone service. That's the basic service that has to do with the telephone and the 25 pair color concept, 25 pair concept, color code. Uh, then we talk about uh, coaxial cable, which is still being used. Uh, cable TV used to be quite popular. Now you have cable modems. So that's the cable that is being installed. Uh, then uh, we will talk about uh, signal routing and multiplexing. Uh, so that's how it's going to do with this, the type of cables that are being used. Ethernet versus coaxial cable, analog versus digital, and how the signals are being combined and uh, shut down the pipes as far as the, uh, the cabling goes. So just so you have some sort of idea of, uh, of, of uh, of the cables that are being used and the type of signal uh, that you can expect to find. And uh, that will help you with installations, design, and troubleshooting systems, okay? Now, um, <clears throat> then we're going to have test one, which is going to cover pretty much this, 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 that, that, and that. So that's the first thing. It looks like we have more topics for test one, but uh, some of the topics are going to be easier than others, okay? Uh, so then uh, after the test one, we're going to start talking about the telephone systems and we're going to cover the conventional systems that are still being in use. And we're going to talk about uh, VoIP, which is voice over internet protocol. So these will be the digital phones and digital service that is being implemented 
in the um, you know, in the in the industry right now. Then we're going to talk about the PA systems because they're also being used uh, quite widely, and there are PA systems that could be uh, uh, and well, PA systems uh, it's, it's animal of its own. Um, you can have uh, anything from theater uh, setup to just good old rock and roll setup to um, seal, uh, speakers in the ceiling in your local uh, fast food restaurants uh, to school PA systems and whatever else, the public address, uh, how those things are being solved. And those are those things are being installed all over the place. It would be a good idea if you know what the idea is behind that, so you could uh, be more employable and more attractive to the potential employers. All right. Uh, then uh, we'll talk about the category cabling. Uh, so uh, basically, what we're going to talk about what's happening in the cable here, okay? and which cable to use in which circumstance, uh, in which situation, which cable to use because of what type of signal goes through that and uh, with the construction uh, requirements as far as uh, with the construction rules. All right, so um, that. <clears throat> then we'll switch to, uh, we're going to cover a little bit of an idea of what's going on with the security systems, fire alarm systems, and the surveillance systems. Uh, if you want to pursue fire, you, there's a separate, um, uh, there's a separate program that we have here uh, uh, that you can just go with to do, deal with the fire alarms or fire, basically fire uh, systems, not just the alarms, but uh, that has to, fire has, fire and safety has to do with uh, uh, fire alarms, uh, extinguishers, uh, fire codes, um, and uh, inspections, and so on, and so on, installation and troubleshooting. Okay, uh, but we're going to cover just a little bit, just so I can give you the idea of what's going on uh, with that, to see maybe that's something that is for you, and maybe something you would like to pursue. And surveillance, uh, surveillance is security cameras, uh, those are being installed a lot. Uh, so security alarms and surveillance, uh, one thing I haven't uh, included here was uh, access control. That's another, uh, that's another um, direction that, uh, well, there's, if you get a job in communications, you won't be doing just one thing unless you're hired by some huge company like Rogers or Bell, there's a better chance that uh, you're going to be doing a uh, specific one thing or, or you your duties are going to be narrowed to doing one thing for a longer time, and then maybe you can requalify to do something else. But if you uh, if you get uh, hi yourself hired by another communications company, uh, you're going to have to deal with pretty much all kinds of systems, uh, not just one type of systems. Okay, so I'm going to try to give you as much as I can when it comes to that. Uh, all right. Then we're going to talk about the cabling infrastructure concepts. Um, well, it's a glorified name for wire pulling. There is whole science to so-called wire pulling. It's cable installations. Um, well, what can I tell you about this? Just by concentrating on that, if you're really good at installing wires, running that in the walls, in the ceiling, in the floors, terminating and, uh, and making things look nice and neat, you can spend your whole career doing just that and you can make pretty good money. Um, and then uh, we'll go over some tools and equipment that we're being uh, that is going to be that is going to be used in uh, that is used in the industry. So just so you know what uh, what you're dealing with. Uh, then devices and techniques. Uh, devices and techniques. Uh, uh, we'll go over some sort of um, well many devices that are being used. For example. Uh, what happens if you uh, uh, if you go over the length limit of installing a copper cabling? What do you have available so you can make it work without having to reinstall uh, the new wire? Sometimes you can, and sometimes you cannot because well, if you pull another wire, it's going to be just as long as the previous one. So uh, uh, this type of thing, um, and we'll we'll cover different type of devices that are being used in the industry currently. Okay. 
And then we'll go over some cable types, uh, which cable is being used for what, and uh, where you can and have to install a certain type of cable, um, and things like that. All right, so that's basically the scope of, uh, of the whole program. Now let's see here. Um, other than making up the lab in the open lab sessions, can the student attend another session during the same week? Well, that would be uh, that would be something that would be called extenuating circumstances. If you really, really something really happens in your life, then uh, we'll try to uh, accommodate that. Just keep in mind uh, one uh, at one, any given time right now because of the COVID restrictions we are allowed to have no more than 10 people in a classroom. So just don't make it a regular thing just because you want to do, because you want to, if there is something really that happens in your life that, uh, that, uh, that would require you to play with the schedule a little bit, just contact us and we'll take it uh, on one by one case, okay? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's the, uh, as far as the chat lines go. I thought we were not allowed to buy them. Oh, um, it's not that we're not allowed. We can't have more than 10 people in a class. And if there's, if something is prearranged, then yes, uh, if we can do it, then why, then why not? But don't make it a regular thing because that creates chaos and mess. Okay. Uh, all right. Now let's take care of the first. Is that the first one? Just give me a second. That's the first. Okay, let's take care of the first slideshow here. Uh, get a good coffee, enjoy the ride. All right. Uh, you like 1013 network cabling, also known as structured cabling course. Now, I just posted a picture. It's one of the installations that I have done uh, about 10 years ago, maybe less. Um, and I'm going to explain to you what is involved in this thing. This is one of the department stores. Uh, what do we see in the background? We see one, two, three grommets out of which uh, you can see bundles of wires coming out. Now, those three grommets were specified by the contractor, uh, um, which kind of cables are supposed to be coming out of those grommets and they have to be pulled inside the wall behind that rack in certain way and they have to be installed that way, okay? Now, on the top shelf, we see a PA system amplifier. You see, remember what I mentioned to you, you're not going to do only one thing. Um, there, was a, there was a person years ago uh, that he got himself hired with in the company that I was, um, I was leading some projects. And he shows up, he says, I am here with my, uh, I'm here with my punch. I'm hired here to do the punch. I'll just do the punch. What do I punch? Uh, dude, we need to pull the wires first. So get, uh, get yourself some good pair of side cutters and let's start pulling the wire. Oh, no, no, I'm here to do the punch. No, you know, you're going to be, able, you're going to have to do all kinds of things. Okay, so uh, let's say PA system here. So this first part here is a PA system that is connected to the intercom. This is a power supply. Uh, of the intercom and this is the heart of the intercom these are the phones that are by the cash registers and people can um i can talk and do announcements so if somebody wants to do announcements they pick up the phone by the cash register uh, it's connected to this box control box and is using the pa system that is connected to the speakers that is, and you'll be able to do the announcements so that's the pa systems at the top shelf Okay, uh, next thing here, we have a something that's called a patch panel. And uh, all these wires here and some of them here are running to the patch panels. So this is the patch panel that services cameras, security cameras. So whatever the facility is, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight security cameras. And the cameras are connected by the Ethernet cable, CAT5E, everything runs on category cable these days, or most of the stuff, right? Now, these there's just straight links from here 
to wherever the camera is connected. So you have one of those links. Basically, it's just another form of this. There's a jack on one side and jack on the other side, and one side is connected to the patch panel, and the other side is connected to wherever the camera is. Now, from here, and it's a permanent link from the back of this patch panel to the back of the faceplate that is using, the, that is employing the jack that is uh, supposed to be with the camera. Now, you're using patch cords or patch cables that you're plugging into the controller that controls the camera. In this case, it's a switch that routes the signal between from the cameras to wherever else it's supposed to be routing from. So it's not a router, but I'm using the word routing the signal, directing the signal, it's a traffic controller. You can see some lights blinking, okay, um, that indicate uh, the status of whichever port. So every port in the patch panel has its own port at the switch. And over here is some uh, something that's called a cable management device. Uh, that's where you arrange those cables nice and neat. Not a big philosophy. So now you know what this part is about. Okay, now let's see the bottom side of the rack here. All right, uh, the bottom side of the rack, it has a PDU. That's called a PDU power distribution unit. Uh, it's a one rack space. So this is the rack. And right here is one rack space. Some devices employ two rack spaces. You see, this one is like two rack spaces. One, two, yeah, two rack spaces right here. And this one is only, uh, no, actually this one is rack, one rack space as well. Uh, is there one that has two rack spaces here? No. But there are devices, like for example, a shelf would have two or three rack space, okay? Now, um, so this is the power distribution. It's a basically a glorified name for a power bar. Uh, so you have a couple of AC outlets on at the front. So you could uh, connect your laptop or whatnot if you have any diagnostic equipment that you're troubleshooting it or whatnot. And there's a bunch of outlets at the back uh, into which all the equipment is plugged in, okay? Uh, over here, you have modems and gateways and all other switches that have to do with other parts of the sto uh, store. Now this year, uh, I think this wire management uh, system, it's also a single rack or maybe it's a double rack. I can't tell by the angle of that. And there's another patch panel uh, that uh, connects computers, cash registers, anything else that have to do with the store and maybe some wireless access points and, and, uh, and some, even some uh, control uh, signals that have to do with the climate control. Um, so uh, now you can see that the patch cords and uh, even the contractor in this case, uh, in the documentation, they specified which color of the cable is supposed to do be used for which device. Sometimes you get that. So you have to read the documentation. You have to follow the instructions. If you do something that is not right, you, you, you might put yourself in a position that your work is not going to be received. It's going to be rejected until you fix it. And if, you, uh, if you're doing an installation that is in your town, no problem, you can go back can fix. But uh, sometimes you might be sent on the plane uh, to Alberta or Saskatchewan or Newfoundland um, or Vancouver uh, to, and you're going to have one or two weeks to complete the installation and it has to be done perfect because once you come back home, uh, there's no way to go back to fix one little thing. So I'm going to uh, spend a great deal on making sure that you get into a habit of following the instructions. And the only thing I can do here is, we can do here, is making sure that you conduct your labs according to the instructions and that you uh, complete the documentations exactly as you are asked, okay? Um, so that's going to get you into a habit of, uh, of uh, doing things according to instructions, right? Now, um, there was a question here. I thought we were in a PA system is about phone. Um, <clears throat> PA system quite often is interfaced 
with telephone systems. So in the building or facility, you can have a telephone system that basically takes care of the phone calls and communications. But quite often, you can see people picking up the phone, punching a couple buttons, and then you can hear the sound through the speaker, beep, and then you can uh, do the announcement. So quite often, the telephone system is interfaced with the public address system, through which you can play background music, or you can just access that from the telephone system and do the announcement. So um, PA system is a separate thing, telephone system is a separate thing, but they can be interfaced. Okay, next slide. Structured cabling, let's get some, uh, you're welcome. Let's get some uh, definitions here. Structured cabling is a planned cabling system which systematically lays out the wiring and wire management necessary for communications, including voice, data, and video. Here's the difference between you are in, you installing or someone installing something in the basement that is going to be cool and impress the neighbors and being yourself getting yourself hired so you can do uh, things and install things and devices on the commercial level okay. that's all i'm going to say about that now this is a real picture. Did I say planned cabling system, which systematically lays out the wire and wire management? We'll take a look at this. Does it look like it was planned and systematic? There's nothing that is planned about that. There's nothing that is systematic about that. This is... Um, a picture of an IDF. IDF stands for uh, Intermediate Distribution Frame in one of the huge department stores. Yes, I'm going to be posting those slides on FOL. Yeah, yeah. Um, in some cases, you're going to be put in a situation that you're going to have to work with this. You're going to be called for a service call that uh, you need to fix something that is not working. Well, if you were just, if that was the first day on the job, <laughs> I mean, and you come up to something like this, I don't know, you probably would just turn around and go say, like, <laughs> bye, right? Uh, but if you learn how to do things properly and structurally, yes, you're not going to be very happy to see something like that, but you will know what to look for because you have done it before in a structured way. So sometimes you're going to see nicely and neatly laid out cabling, and sometimes you're going to see something like this. And still, if you get into something like this, you will be able to sort this out, find what the problem is, and then fix it, close it up, and get the manager of whatever the facility is to sign that um, you have done the job. Okay. They make scissors for this, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, here's another example of structured wiring. Uh, this is, uh, I took a picture of one of the huge facilities somewhere in GTA. I can't tell you where that is. Not a big secret, but uh, just in case. Uh, this is a telephone system wiring using something that's called a 66 system that was uh, used in 60s, 70s, 80s, and right now in the States. <laughs> Nothing against the States, but somehow they prefer still using the 66 blocks. Now, if you employ the Bix blocks, uh, which is basically a made in Canada system, uh, you will be able to solve this whole routing of the telephone wiring in um, maybe by using a quarter of the space. Now, because it was done a long time ago, and it was installed, it would be just a huge job to convert that into the big system. So it's just left alone there. So yes, um, uh, if you would be using a new system, um, you would not be using the 66 blocks in, on this kind of scale, right? 
however, sometimes when you get contracts from the companies from the states, you will be sent those type of devices, connection devices or wire routing devices or panels to connect telephone wires. And to be honest, uh, when I was working for different companies, whenever we get the contracts from the states, we would have the equipment shipped to us, including those 66 blocks. And we would just take the 66 block, <laughs> toss it in the garbage, and we would just go. It would be more efficient for us to spend money on getting a BIX block and terminate the telephone wiring on the BIX than having to deal with the 66 block. And so that's what you do with those. You know? But if you have uh, uh, if you have a 66 block installed in some department store and you have to do a service call, at least you will know after this course, you will know how to approach that. So, uh, uh, so that's uh, one type of installation. Now, uh, in the modern days, this is uh, very rarely you're going to have to in walk into this type of uh, uh, facility. Uh, now, this is a Google data center in Oklahoma. I just took that picture from the internet. Um, that's what it looks like. Uh, so now um, uh, this type of installation versus this type of installation, uh, there is another way of, uh, of looking at the structured cabling system. Uh, and I want you to know as much as possible so you can actually tell if you find yourself in a room like that, you can tell what is what. And if you somebody is asking you to troubleshoot something or find something and do something with it, uh, I don't want you to know what they're talking about. Okay. Now, safety, safety, safety. Uh, well, we have gone through this slide show um, last term, but we're going to go through it again. There's never too much of that. Uh, there's always something you will carry out. And if there's one thing you will carry out that's going to save your life, then my job is done. So let's just go quickly through that. And we're going to take a quick five minute or 10 minute break and we're going to uh, continue with the second hour okay so safety accidents five most common reasons for accidents uh, five reasons one overexertion okay a different color cables for different types of cables on the colors just for the cable management uh, okay I'm just going to stop here I answer the question from the chat line um, all right, so here's a, here's, a, here's a data cable, all right? And this color is blue. You might get uh, the same cable in yellow jacket. You might get the same cable in orange. You might get the same cable in green or what or whatnot. Sometimes it doesn't make a difference other than for the um, organizational purposes. And some contractors might request that all the cables are blue. So basically that all the computers are going to be in blue. But there is that one wireless access point in the ceiling. And they say, you know what, use yellow patch cable uh, from the patch panel onto the switch, just so when we have to go and, and troubleshoot that we don't have to look for that it's going to be that yellow cable, things like that. Okay. And sometimes, uh, sometimes it's just that. But when it comes to fiber optics, uh, there are different color cables uh, or jacketing that signify different type of cables as well. So there is no one tiered answer for that. Okay? Depends, uh, depends on what you're dealing with. Okay. All right. Uh, overexertion, uh, workplace injuries, number one cause. If you're tired, right? causes uh, even light loads such as books, stacks of paper or files can cause injury to your back, neck and shoulders if you don't use proper techniques, actions associated with that lifting, pushing, pulling, holding, bending, crawling, reaching and kneeling. OK, how to prevent that training, uh, safety equipment and use caution. OK, you don't want to be a guy or girl using that wonderful facility that uh, the local hospitals has to offer, okay? Uh, now, uh, number two reason, uh, slips, falls, and uh, trips. Uh, in, uh, leading cause of disabling workplace injuries, causes for that. Well, desk or file drawers can be left open. Somebody can trip on that. That's office environment. Uh, using a chair to reach objects uh, or 
as opposed to a ladder. Loose electrical cords or wires, spills, wet floors, debris, and ice. Prevention. Clean up spills immediately. If a spill can be cleaned up right away, place a wet floor. Warning signs for workers. Keep walkways and hallways free of debris, clutter, and obstacles. Uh, keep filing cabinets and desks drawers shut when they are not in use. Cover cables, cords in walkways. Uh, replace burnt or burnt out light bulbs immediately if there's a light bulb that is burnt out uh, people can see where they're going uh, chances of them getting into an accident can be uh, can increase uh, consider installing abrasive floor mats for repealing war for replacing worn flooring encourage workers to wear comfortable properly fitted shoes okay so here is uh, the case on the left-hand side, and here's the case on the right-hand side. Uh, think about which one is more, could be, uh, could create more chances for an accident, okay? Uh, poor housekeeping, uh, not, it's not just a mess. Poor housekeeping is creating dangers or is creating hazards. Poor housekeeping can contribute to accidents by hiding hazards that can cause injuries. Effective housekeeping helps eliminate workplace hazards and promotes a safer and more efficient work environment. Effective housekeeping at work benefits, uh, well, fewer accidents by creating an orderly, clutter-free, spill-free work environment, decreased fire hazards, reduced exposure to hazardous substances, improved control of tools and materials, better hygienic conditions leading to improved health. That's a good one right now. Uh, more effective use of space, less genital work, and improved morale. Uh, basically, you could, could be happier working in a nice and clean environment. All right. Um, effective housekeeping, cleaning up during the shift. Now, uh, when it comes to cleaning up, uh, I'm going to actually deduct marks if you leave your, ho your house. <laughs> no, I'm not going to go to your house. If you leave your workspace cluttered, because you know what? I'm going to have to clean that. And if I don't uh, get you to clean up your workspace as you leave the lab, then you're going to get to a habit of leaving your space cluttered. And once you get hired, your boss is going to get mad. I'm going to deduct marks. Your boss is going to deduct you. <laughs> okay, well, okay. Day-to-day uh, -day cleanup, waste disposal, removal of unsafe materials, inspection to ensure the cleanup is complete. All right, so uh, uh, the stuff that's in red on the bottom picture here, that's, you know what, uh, it, it actually says that it's a wrong way. That's wrong. It's bad. It's, it's bad. It's mess, okay? And uh, on the right side, it says the right way because there is no mess, uh, okay? Um, so now you, now you know. Right. Okay, uh, four, taking shortcuts. Uh, there's that saying, whoever takes shortcuts doesn't sleep at home. <laughs> Should I say more? Shortcuts can reduce job safety, increase the chase or chance of an injury. Facility managers should reinforce proper procedures for all employees' tasks on a regular basis. Make sure the employees are aware of the risks associated with taking shortcuts. Distractions, that's a big one here. No, not just uh, uh, just a regular distraction here. If your day doesn't start well at home, your worries can carry over to the workplace. And that's a very common uh, reason for distractions. All right. Um, employees can drop their mental guards and pull their focus away from safe work procedures. Accidents often occur when employees are distracted from walking into doors uh into tripping over or to tripping over clutter okay prevention uh adhering to the facility standards including quality housekeeping program consistent uh, ground maintenance and awareness of your surroundings will prevent you from being distracted at work another uh another big thing is uh you see this picture here um now you see those guys are using cell phones they go, He's yeah. yeah, he's there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, 
Here is the uh, picture of people using cell phones. That's a big one, okay? <laughs> um, now, when we, uh, when we talk about cell phones, okay? Consider this. Oh, got a text. Hold on. See what I just done? Okay, you're just all waiting. There's about almost 100 people there waiting for me. I got a text. And if, some, if my boss was watching me and said, okay, you know, hold on, guys. I'm going to answer the text because somebody wants to know if I want to go um, out after the COVID restrictions are gone. Then, uh, then uh, somebody would be not happy about me doing that. Now, if, if you get yourself hired, you're going to be watched specifically for using this thing here at work. If you use it a lot, uh, your boss is going to find out. Trust me on that, okay? Uh, uh, company owners and bosses are allergic to seeing people hanging on the phones while at work because they are paying the money, not for hanging on the phone. Anyways, I'm just getting off the topic, maybe a little bit, but maybe not, all right? I've seen people lose, lose their jobs because of this. Excuse me. Uh, all right. Um, so I think that's the last slide. Uh, here's the references here. We're going to go to course overview uh, and uh, some more. Excuse me. Let's take. Uh, let's come back here. Five after twelve. Okay. I'm just going to leave this thing on. Uh, five after twelve, and let's get some new coffee. And um, uh, I'll meet five after twelve to continue with that. Okay.
Okay, let's give one more minute. It's 104. I said five after 12. I meant five after one, but you know what I meant. Time travel, yeah. <laughs> that would be nice, time travel. Would you go into the future or would you go back? Hmm. Here's a question. <laughs> go back, yeah. If I could go back, I would be a multi-billionaire now. There would not be a Google, it would be back goal. <laughs> All right, five after one. All right, let's keep going with this thing here. Any questions so far? No, okay. If you have a question, just uh, shoot it through the chat line. I will try to answer that. All right, All right. course overview. Course overview, theory and labs, all right? 14 weeks altogether, two hour, everybody gets two hours of lab and two hours of theory, even though you have every second week a lab, trust me, you're going to have your time filled getting prepared for the lab. Uh, and altogether it goes for uh, 56 hours. Uh, 14 weeks times four, that's 56, all right? Now, on the post-it notes, I have put a couple of YouTube links that I found uh, that have to do with the type of a career or the type of a job associated with structured cabling, network cabling, and so on. I encourage you to watch those to see. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I like this guy. He's doing a uh, pretty good job explaining what this job is about. And uh, as I said, I have uh, over 30 years of experience doing that. He's bang on, okay? Uh, so watch these two videos. That's going to give you some better idea of uh, how to uh, 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 what this thing is involved, what this thing involves, uh, this uh, structured cabling business kind of a thing. All right. Uh, so when you download the PDF version of this, uh, you can just click on that, and uh, the link is going to take you there. All right. Uh, now we're going to have bi-weekly face-to-face labs. The F2F is a new term, face-to-face. -face. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, COVID related implementation, two labs per session. So we're going to take care of two labs. In-class demonstration is going to be minimized. So I'm going to do a lot of uh, video demonstrations uh, to prepare you for the labs. And please watch those videos because if you don't watch those videos that I'm going to do, you're going to be in trouble when you come to class. Right. Uh, now, video demonstrations would be produced, must watch as part of your lab preparation. Weekly lectures must attend. Okay, I'm going to say something here now. Uh, yes, uh, this uh, lecture is being recorded and is going to be posted on YouTube so you can go back and watch it. But do not plan of not attending the class and, uh, in, uh, and, and watch those videos later. Once in a while, you might have to do that because something happens in your life, okay? But do not plan on doing that as a regular thing because uh, when you come and attend the class, you're spending the time and you have attended the class and you got the information that you can turn into knowledge. Now, if you plan to, uh, to watch those later, uh, later on, you're going to have a test and then you're going to find out, oh, all of a sudden you have seven hours to watch. Uh, that's not going to be happening, okay? So try to attend those, uh, those lectures here. Do it for yourself. You paid, you paid the money, okay? You might as well get the, uh, get the product, okay? Uh, now, uh, punctuality with the labs, we have to implement the five minute rule, okay? Uh, the door will be locked five, minute, five minutes after the class scheduled time. And I have done it before, and I'm pretty consistent with that. And all the other instructions, instructors will be as well. Five minutes after the hour, the door is locked. You can bang, kick, and scream, and the door is still going to be locked. 
The reason for that is, uh, even though the labs are going to be demonstrated on videos, uh, we're going to have to explain some safety procedures and there's going to be some additional explanation required no matter what. So now if uh, when I do this, every time it comes on time, and then we can carry on with the regular schedule. And I'm going to be busy walking around, uh, helping you out with the hands-on things that you're doing because you can watch the video a million times, but unless you do this thing hands-on in person, <sighs> You don't know how to do it, trust me, okay? A lot of those things. Uh, so then if somebody comes late, I have to explain this thing to that person again. And then five minutes later, somebody else is going to come late and I'm, that's not going to happen. We won't be able to carry on, okay? And it's not fair to the people who are coming on time. Okay? Now, um, yeah, so that's, uh, I just uh, explained this part here. Lecture notes will be posted on FOL after weekly schedule. So uh, I'm quite efficient with posting those these lectures on YouTube. So as soon as this lecture is done, within an hour, usually within half an hour, this thing is going to be available on YouTube. Okay. Uh, blended delivery course. This is called, this is a blended type of a delivery, but this is not an online course. A significant volume of the content will be introduced verbally, which is I'm talking right now, or kinesthetically, which means hands-on, okay? Uh, please attend all classes and make your own notes as well, okay? Now, what are going to be tested on? It will be tested on everything that is being served to you, okay? Uh, which basically includes uh, posted lecture notes in form of PDF, recorded lecture video materials, which is uh, the YouTube materials that uh, are going to be posted, your own notes and your lab experience. Okay, so be aware, pay attention while you're here, be awake. All right, academic integrity. I'm not going to read that. Uh, this one basically says don't cheat or else. Right? Or else you're going to get uh, hit with academic offense. So that's one thing, you can get academic offense. But uh, if you're cheating, well, you're cheating yourself, you paid the money, get the product, because once you leave this school, and one day, the day is coming, that you're going to leave this school, and you're going to be asked to apply all the knowledge that you have learned here at the workplace. And if you don't learn how to do this, you won't be able to perform. And if you are not able to perform, uh, your boss is not going to be able to pay you money for it. Okay. okay. So that is the last slide for this thing here. It says, let's begin, have a wonderful term. I took this picture um, during one of our installations. Uh, I think it was in Owen Sound. When your installation begins, everything comes to you in boxes. So basically we have everything in boxes now and we're going to start unpacking things one by one and taking care of those things. That rack that uh, in the beginning of the slideshow was basically in the room that was in, built in that area here. It was hanging on this wall. Okay. All right, let me queue up the other, um, the other slideshow here. All right. So that was that, that was that rack. So now when you see this, uh, you're not as green. You should be able to tell or somewhat tell of what those parts are. If not, go back and watch this video here. All right, grading, we have taken care of that. Uh, labs grading, okay, let's... Um, uh, let's see here. All labs deliverables are due one minute before midnight of the day before your next in-class session, unless otherwise specified. So basically what this means, the bottom thing trumps the top one. Okay? When we do the labs on your lab report, I'm going to, and other instructors are going to put a little date in the top right corner that's when the lab submission is due. The labs are going to be submitted electronically and I'm going to, we're going to mark them electronically, okay? And if that date goes past the certain date that your submission date, 
you're going to be hit with late lab submission. Late lab submissions, 25% marks deduction automatically if you submit that late, unless otherwise specified. Uh, then 5% marks deduction for each additional week. All right. Uh, if you miss, if you don't attend lab session, any not attended lab will be performed during the open lab week. During the open lab week, anyone can attend any sections class. Use this concept wisely, complete your labs on time. Uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, about half an hour ago, uh, if you have too many labs that are not done, you're going to have a hard time making up uh, those labs during the makeup sessions or the open lab sessions. Uh, if you miss multiple labs, yeah, okay, so that's basically what I said. Conditions, only one lab per student and one open lab. All right, so there's a bit of a limitation here. Your open lab attendance must be pre-approved by the lab instructor who is scheduled for that time. And you will, you will see the schedule soon. Uh, that uh, you're uh, sorry, okay. So open lab sessions are not repeat lab sessions and are not meant to improve marks for the labs that already have been performed. So that's pretty much safe explanatory. Any lab performed during open lab session, 25% mark deduction automatically. So your new 100% is 75%, unless there are some extenuating circumstances. Now, when, the, when the, we can take them case by case. Deliverables are due one week after the in-class session. 5%, so basically, so that's this one here. Uh, then 5% grade deduction each way. So you can just go back and see this uh, rules here. All lab reports must be submitted by the end of week 14, at, uh, one minute before midnight. Uh, so I can actually give you the marks before the final marks have to be due, okay? Um, now, uh, open lab sessions, here's the schedule. It, this is all going to be posted. You can see that uh, later on. Open lab session week six, that's a family uh, day week on Monday. And then week 13 and 14. So these are the, the date ranges here. Now, uh, who is performing, who is teaching which lab session? So here's me, here's I, Mr. Buck, uh, Monday, Monday, Wednesday. Okay, these are lab sessions. So I got session one, two, and four, and these are the times. So if you are planning to attend an open lab, look at this thing, send me an email and see if you can show up for that uh, open lab session, just because we need to have uh, no more than 10 people in the class. Then Mr. Crouch is uh, doing the labs on Tuesdays between nine and nine. So here's the thing, section five and section six, and Mr. Schizler doing the lab section three on Thursday, that's pretty self-explanatory here. Um, the lab report preparation. Okay, so somebody was asking, uh, so I'm saying uh, the lab one is not uh, on YouTube. Yes, it is, uh, it is right here. And now you know, uh, so click on this link. You are going to see the preparation for lab one, which is going to be practicing the deliverables. This is the YouTube link demonstrating the preparing and the, 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 the <laughs> this YouTube link demonstrates preparing the deliverables by using the Photoshop and MS Word. Now, do you have to use Photoshop and MS Word? Well, you're going to have a hard time skipping the MS Word part, but you don't have to use Photoshop. You can use other graphic processing to tailor and, and process the graphics or you can take a good photo with your cell phone. And if it's nice and clear, you can insert that into the uh, Microsoft Word uh, as part of the lab. Now, um, try not to, when, when you take the photos of your work or the work order that you're going to have, take a good picture of that, nice and straight, fill up the whole page. Do not have this thing photographed from an angle like this that is actually sitting on your bed that you can see your bed sheets and pajamas and your favorite teddy bear in the background okay these marks are going to be deducted from that that's unprofessional okay? uh, yeah you can use the scanner app yeah 
whichever way you do, right? Now, the, the, uh, you can choose, okay, let's get back to this line right here. Uh, you can choose different ways of preparation as long as the file is clear, readable, and tidy. Also check the evaluation uh, rubric. So every submission is going to have a rubric and I'm going to show you that as well. Uh, the file is in PDF format because that's what we're asking you to do. We're practicing following the instructions, remember? Uh, all pages within the, are within one document. Do not send me multiple files. I'm asking you for one PDF file. You give me my one PDF file, okay? Um, page one contains the work order. It's a full page. And page two contains two separate tables where each table includes the image of requested, image requested in the top row and the label image on the lower uh, row. What does that mean? All right, so basically, pretty much all your work orders, your lab, are, your labs are going to look like this. Um, yeah. Page one yeah. is going to include the work order. That's going to fill up the first, the whole space. Right? It's going to be done by hand. Everything has to be acknowledged, every field. If the field is not valid like for example who is the second person who was with you on the job site you're the only one so just acknowledge that draw a line through it or put non-applicable but don't leave anything empty okay and then there's going to be a signature and in the top right corner i'm going to put a date uh, that um, <clears throat> that the lab is due okay so that is going to be that now I have made the lab report in the form of a work order. Now, you're going to have different types of work orders and sometimes you're going to have a paper to fill out and photograph and send it to whoever needs to receive that. And uh, quite often you're going to have um, uh, cell phone apps. That's where the industry is going now. Is it good or bad? Uh, in some ways it's efficient, but in some ways uh, some technicians are complaining about uh, the way some of the apps are organized, but that's the way the world is going. But now we're going to practice on paper here. Uh, so that's the first page, okay? Doesn't matter what is going to be in the future, you are going to be asked to perform as you are told, unless uh, you don't want to get paid, okay? or unless you want to lose job, your job. Here, okay, second page. Second page is going to have two tables and that's going to be in Microsoft Word. First table is going to have one big row on the top and one smaller row on the bottom and the second table separate table is going to look just the same so in the first in the first table you're going to present the image that you're going to be asked to present and there's going to be a certain label of that image put that label in the table do not create one window and then just put a little text marks deducted follow the procedure and the second page is going to uh, contain another image that is going to be asked you uh, to uh, ask that you are going to uh, put in there. And you're going to label that all philosophy. Okay, that's all you're going to have to do. But have to do it properly as you're asked to do. Okay, that's our lab. And I have made the lab report in the form to simulate the sort of real world work orders and we're going to go over that okay. so we're going to be practicing the real thing okay. now let's see if i can so we are making a lab report like this after each lab yes yeah okay. now let me erase that here you can go back and see it all right now erase and dry cool 
All right, let's keep going here. Here's, oh, yeah. Here is what the lab report is going to look like. And let me just kind of exit that here and show you where that is. When you go to the uh, our class portal, go to content. And I'm making myself look like a student now here. And if you go to student items right here, click on that. And you see here labs lab schedule and you see here lab work orders click on that there are two work orders for you to download and you can download and print a bunch of them and just have them in your bag okay so first one looks like the one that i'm going to show you and the second one is going to be for one lab when we do the coaxial cable that's the only different work order because there are some questions that you need to uh you need to answer uh, that are associated with the coaxial cable here okay so Every, all the labs are the first work order. You can download, print a bunch of them, except for that lab that is coaxial cable. Okay. Now let's go over. Let's go over how the uh, work order looks like here. Where are we? Okay. All right. So that's what the uh, work order looks like. And we're going to go into the details because I have magnified some portions of that. That's all to be filled out by hand. So the top part of that is a work order sign off. Okay, it's a, it's the top part of that, just a magnified version, so we can we can explain things. First thing here, workstation number. Right, the workstations that we will be working on are going to be numbered and identified, just so I can see whoever left a mess on their on the work or, uh, uh, workstation. Yeah. And so I can deduct the marks for you. Please give me opportunity to deduct marks because that shows that I'm working. No, just kidding. I want you to get all 100%, but we just have to make sure that you do your job. All right. So here, workstation number, put that on. Uh, and they're going to be A1 through A6 and B1 to B6. Once we get there, I will show you where the label is. Okay. Now, this is our course. Uh, does the work order have to be printed? No, it doesn't have to be in color, no. Uh, no. Uh, now, <clears throat> here's where you put the lab number. So let's say, for example, the first one is going to be lab number one, lab title. Just get it from the lab schedule. And this first one is going to be called deliverables. Deliverables must be uploaded to the designated Dropbox before the next consecutive lab begins, subject to automatic mark deductions. I just put that little condition here, but once you go to work, you're going to have some other conditions that you have to read, okay? And some of them are very specific and you have to complete what you need to do. Now, purchase requisition, this number here, you just make up any number and put something there. This is the number, it's a, uh, it's a purchase order or purchase requisition number that is going to be given to you by somebody who sends you to do the job. You get PO number, you do the work. You don't get the PO number, you don't do the work because you won't get paid, all right? So just make up some number, put something there, okay? Site number. You're going to see something like that. Uh, let's say all Home Depots have their identify, ID, ID number or 7-Elevens have their ID number. So uh, you might see something like that. Uh, and that also is going to be a number given to you by somebody who sends to you to do the job for the purpose of exercising. Just put any number here, make something up, okay? Site name, you can put any name. Um, usually people put Fanshawe College, you know, just, you know. City, state or province, you can here put London, Ontario, but you can put anything, you know, you can put Chicago, Illinois, if you want. Uh, now, uh, site contact, uh, site contact, um, usually when you go to, um, uh, to do a service call, that's, that's a service call, right? Uh, so when you do a service call, let's say uh, there is a cash register that is not working at a certain Home Depot in, let's say, Chatham. So you drive to Chatham and the side contact would be, you walk in with your tools and the first thing you ask for is, who is the manager on duty? Okay, so you ask for the manager on duty. They are going to get it for, get that person for you. 
and of course you're going to present here yeah, i don't know i'm here to do so and so here's my work order uh and they're going to say oh yeah yeah the cash register number three is kind of uh, finicky there so can you see what's going on so they will know so that's the side contact in this case you can make up any name here and just put it there All right uh email and so on you're going to have uh, uh that provided by the person who sends you or the company who sends you, all right? So that's the top part of that. Now we're going to move down, uh, site acceptance, uh, customer signature. Customer signature, that's your lab instructor. Once you perform the lab, in the real world, the customer signature is that, uh, yes, that person was here and the job is complete and the person is going to sign for you because the company will have to pay for the service call and if it's not done, they won't pay. So yes, the job is done. Can you confirm that it's working? Yes, thank you very much. Where do I sign? You sign here, okay? Now it is your responsibility to get that person's signature. I have, we have done it in the past that purposely we're trying to forget to sign that work order. It is your responsibility to make sure that I sign that. Otherwise, you get no mark. If you, in real life, you don't get that signature, you don't get paid. Your boss doesn't get paid. Your boss, mad at you, you, sad. You get the idea, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, uh, customer name, name. So, for example, somebody signa uh, puts their signature and the signatures are different. Make sure you get the person's name. Who was it that signed and date that, okay? Completion verified by. Okay, so here's a signature of the client that says, yeah, the job is done. So why do we have this? Well, sometimes, uh, especially in the IT business, uh, let's say a cash register doesn't work, it has to be fixed or the connection has to be fixed. The company that is sending you dispatching you to do the job it is for you to do the job to fix the problem now sometimes the work that is done has to be verified by an outside company who is servicing the IT portion portion of that. So that company services everything that has to do the managing the service calls that company is servicing their network. Uh, and it's, I'm just going to give you an example. There's a company called Bailiwick, and they are in Minnesota somewhere. They are covering the whole uh, Home Depot, all the, all the Home Depots across North America and probably across the whole world. Okay? So there's a lot of Home Depots everywhere. So they'll be the ones who will say, okay, in Windsor, Ontario, there is a problem with uh, Home Depot. Okay, who's in the area? They're going to they have the whole database. Okay, uh, so and so company that employs you is in the area, so they're going to call you. Say, here's the here's the work order. Go to fix the problem with the garden center cash register in Windsor, Ontario. Here is the site number. Here's the store number. Here's the address, and so on. They are dispatching you. Okay, and they are the ones who get who are getting paid to fix the problem by the by the Home Depot. Then they pay the company that hired you and the company that hired you pays you. That's how the kind of a food chain works in that. But in order for that to, uh, are you confused yet? All right. <laughs> in order for that to be verified, it's not just enough that the manager says, yeah, because you can tell anything to the manager. It says, yeah, it's working fine, da, 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 da. I fixed it, uh, look, it works. Right. Then there's an instruction there sometimes to say, okay, once you do it, verify it with Cisco because Cisco is uh, servicing the IT part of that. So you have to call that number. Cisco is going to go, yeah, can I help you? Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I was having uh, that uh, problem. I service that uh, cash register. Yeah, we have that in our database. Let me log in. So the Cisco is going to log into that cash register remotely, verify whatever they have to verify their testing. And they say, yeah, it's good. Here's your ticket number. Right? And that ticket number you have to put in there. So uh, in different other companies, uh, scenarios, you might have to deal with some other form of that. But that's what I mean by saying that. So uh, service company and contact name. So completion verified by outside company. 
you can make up a name and a company, but don't leave it blank. You leave anything blank, you get points deducted, okay? Uh, so here is the company verification. So here's company completion verified by completion verification ticket. Uh, now, technician name one, technician name two. Sometimes you will be sent to do the work by yourself. Sometimes we're, we're simulating the real world here. I want you to get used to what you will, be, you will be seeing once you leave college, okay? Once you get to the real world. <clears throat> so uh, technician one, that would be you, okay? So you sign here and you print your name and you date. Technician number two, if you are the only one who was sent to that, don't leave it blank, just draw a line through it or put non-applicable, N-A, just looks like this, okay? All right, uh, but don't leave it blank. Or if there was somebody else, you can put somebody else there, right? Technician number two, signature, time in. So when did you arrive? When did you leave? Travel time, if any. So to Windsor, Ontario, you would put two hours travel time if you're allowed to bill for one way only. Some companies will pay you to travel one way. Some companies will pay you to travel both ways to, to get there and come back. Obviously, you want to prefer the companies who will pay you for the both ways, okay? You put the times in and then you do the calculations, total hours on site, all right? Um, then you add all the hours that were spent by you and by the other person, total travel hours, total hours. Here's a little bit of a calculation here. Get used to calculating things like that, okay? Now, description of work. Now, uh, you describe, and see there's not much room here to see what, uh, to, to tell what you have done. Uh, and I did that on, on purpose, uh, <coughs> excuse me, because in the real world, that's what you're going to get. So you just have to learn the art of making point form to the point what you have done. It's unless sometimes you are going to uh, have to write a story, but this is not for you to write the story, right? I woke up this morning and I put my red shoes on and I got into my van, I drove to the, and I fixed the problem, okay? So did you get, did you fix the problem? Uh, yeah, let me get to it. You know, I'm still writing my travel time here, right? Okay, so uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to, we're going to show you how to do this. So first few, uh, first few labs, we're going to give you a suggestion of what to write and how to write that. Okay. And then uh, little by little, uh, you're going to get the feel of how to do this properly, okay? Materials used. Now, this is materials that you are billing for. So you're going to say maybe 200 feet of Cat5e cable, right? Uh, you're going to see, say, um, um, well, Ethernet extender had to be put in. So that's that's billing uh, for that. Uh, and then miscellaneous materials, you're not going to count all the screws and all the length of the electrical tape that you have used and all the zip ties. Quite often, you're going to put some miscellaneous materials and you're going to put a little bit of a flat rate, sometimes you know, $10 or $20, whatever the company is there. But do not use tools, materials used. I used a flat, no flathead, slotted screwdriver and a Robertson screwdriver and a side cutters. Do not you put tools there because you're not billing the client for you using the tools unless it's a specific, specific very expensive equipment that um, let's you know, some of the testers of the test equipment uh, can cost 20, 30, $40,000. And how the companies are paying for, they just, every time the equipment is used, you charge the client. So you just would put a flat rate for using that equipment. We're not going to take care of that here. Uh, we're just going to use the material. So you're going to count a piece of wire. You're not going to write a piece of wire. Uh, I'm going to show you how to write. So if you have, few scrap pieces of wire used, you're not going to put three feet of cable, two feet of cable, we're just gonna put lot, right? Lot. And then you're going to put 
5e cable, right? That means it's a little bit, not, but unspecified length, uh, not worth to mention, but still something has to be charged for it. So, uh, uh, you know, so, uh, so that, because even though bit by bit, you still, the company pays for the materials, okay? <clears throat> but usually you would just put like maybe 500 feet of cable, uh, 1,000 feet of cable, 200 feet of cable, and then uh, depending on how the company charges. So put the stuff that you actually used that can be built for, do not list, do, do not say that you have used a screwdriver or side cutters. Okay. And uh, now <clears throat> here's a split kind of a thing here. Um, on the bottom of the worker, this is jack ID, device type, network switch ID, switch uh, ID, so on and so on. In some cases, usually with the IT companies, you're going to have to specify which jack ID you work. So it's, we can say D73, that stands for data 73 or voice 78 or 102. And then uh, you're going to be asked to specify was the data was it was it the data jack or was it the voice jack that is basically used for computer or for telephone, and then the network switch ID. So that's basically you're going to write down where the cable goes on the other side, the panel, a patch panel, and the switch, and network switch port number. We're going to take care of that little by little. For now, I want you to just draw a line through everything because we're not using so if some service calls are not going to employ specific jack ids because you're doing something else so you're going to put either an a not applicable or draw a line through it but don't leave it blank if you leave there's one two three four five six seven eight fields if you leave blank you're going to get hit with eight fields left blank, marks deducted. So most of the time, you're just going to draw a line through every single one of them, okay? Cable test results saved, yes or no, All right? Now, let's say uh, the lab two, we're going to perform cable tests. So we're going to put yes. And have they been saved? Yes, because you're going to take a photograph of the test screen. So yes, so they're saved. In reality, you save the test results in the testing device. And then later on, uh, those can be packaged in one file and sent to the client as requested, okay? If you say that, yes, the whoever receives the work order is going to be looking for them. So do not say yes if there were no tests, but do not say no if they were requested. So pay attention to that. Photos taken and attached as per request, yes or no. Most of the time, pretty much all our labs are going to involve taking photographs. It used to be long time ago that you would just get a piece of paper in your fax machine in the morning, okay? That, um, um, that it would be say, okay, go to Windsor, there's a telephone system to be serviced, okay? Now, you would just get this thing filled out. Client would sign it. You would go uh, back to your office at the end of the day and fax it back to wherever it came from. And that was it. Now, that was, that was the time that the cell phones were not available. Now, when, uh, when the cell phones are available, now everybody carries their cell phones. That means that everybody is able to take photographs. So guess what? Everything that is every job site, <clears throat> pretty much 99.9% .9 of the service calls, installations or whatnot, you will be asked to take photos and include them in the deliverables. And not only that, a lot of the photos that you'll be asked to take, you're going to have to take them in a specific way that is described by the employer or the contractor. So we're going to practice doing the right thing right off the bat, right? Uh, <clears throat> so if you take the photos, say yes. If you don't take the photos, don't say yes, because whoever receives that work order and there will be a person sitting in the office doing just that, receiving the work orders. And if you say yes, they will be looking for them. 
and they'll be making phone calls. Where are the photos? Oh, sorry, no, I didn't take any. They are not going to be very happy with you, okay? Um, and your boss will know that. So this is the all labs except the coaxial cable. That's what the work order looks like. Now, the coaxial cable work order looks like this here, and you're going to have to answer some questions, all right? Tools that uh, most of the specialty tools, like for example, um, a punch down tool. Here is a Bix punch down tool and here is a 110 punch down tool. Those are gonna be provided for you or uh, specialty things. However, you're going to be asked to bring your basic tools excuse me, basic screwdrivers kit. Now you can have one like this, or you can have separate screwdrivers. Okay. Uh, miniature screwdriver, it looks like this. Right. Sometimes um, this one has, you know, a lot of companies are going to uh, give you those screwdrivers. Uh, on one side, there's a slotted screwdriver. On the other side, there's a little Phillips. Very, very useful thing. Always have a few of those because we're going to keep losing them. They'll get, they get lost because they get damaged. Always collect a few of those. If you have a good, if you see a good deal at the Home Depot, pick some one up, some up. And, uh, and <clears throat> now, uh, side cutters. I'm going to ask you to do something here. Side cutters. You see the size of these side cutters? The jobs that we will be doing in our labs will require this size of side cutters. I noticed a lot of people in the previous years, they keep bringing this. Now you're going to struggle with that. This is not a proper tool for what we're going to be using. These are nice, very nifty, very, very clever. Someone was very clever to think of that and you have that in your kit. These are for your other courses for stripping the wire, cutting the wire, one using with breadboards and electronics projects and whatnot. They're not going to cut the mustard when uh, we're dealing with, uh, with our course. Get real side cutters, okay? Hey, all right, uh, needle nose pliers are really good thing to have, very useful. These are the basics of the basics that I'm going to ask you to bring. And a permanent marker, a Sharpie because you're going to be asked to label things and, uh, and show, uh, uh, especially labeling cables. So these are the basic tools that if, you, if you're installing the cable, that's what you would start with, okay? Not a big investition in, in uh, investment, right? Now, uh, there's a question. If a contractor that is self-employed, if you are a contractor that is self-employed and you would add the gas to the expense into the quoted price, Okay, that's a, actually, you know what, that's a really good question because quite often um, you're going to have an option whether to be hired on books, which on books means you are hired by the company, they're guaranteed for 40 hours per week and you are basically like being on a salary. So you're part of the team, part of the, you're hired on books. You come to office every day and they guarantee you that they're going to pay you for 40 hours per week. Okay. Now, usually that wage is less than a, a self-employed contractor. When you're a self-employed contractor, it's called subcontractor, you are going to charge more money, but you're not guaranteed that they're going to call you every day. So... Some people prefer it this way, some people prefer it that way. If you're a self-employed contractor, you don't have to work with one specific company. You can do the wire installations, but sometimes Bell Canada will call you. Sometimes somebody else will gonna call you. Sometimes somebody else is gonna call you and you go, you just walk your way uh, through. Now, it says, do you bill for the, bill for the gas? No, you bill for things and you don't bill for things based on how you negotiate the relationship between you and whoever you have contract with. Okay. So uh, that's when you make the most money per hour, uh, because if you can negotiate $5 more per hour during that five minute conversation with somebody, guess how much money you made per that five minutes, right? 
so uh, so uh, so that's uh, that's that's up to the negotiations between you and whoever you're working with. Okay, some people say pay for the gas. Some people say no. You're going to uh, include the gas with your HST uh, and whatnot. Blah blah blah. And uh, that's the cost of running business. There are different ways. My advice is get an accountant or some bookkeeper who knows what they are doing as far as keeping your business intact. If you think that you can <clears throat> be a self-employed contractor without any knowledge of any financial stuff, you're going to get yourself in huge trouble. Guarantee you that. Okay? It's better to pay some money to some bookkeeper or accountant. They're going to set you up and you're going to get give them the receipts or ask questions they're going to fill out the income tax and blah 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 and you're going to be a happy person if you think you can do it yourself you're going to be tired after doing a job and you say oh you know what i'm going to do it tomorrow paperwork this weekend i'm tired i'm going to do it next weekend next weekend never comes um and after a while you're going to find yourself in some sort of a trouble that you have a hard time to get out of and you're going, then you're going to be unhappy person okay so um i uh, i hope that i asked answered your question when it uh, has to do quoted price yeah uh do we need to report for lab one today no lab one is being done online okay and i'll explain what we're going to do uh where do i uh where is the size of the basic screwdriver you know, if you carry on the screwdrivers <coughs> that uh, that you had for the uh, for the other class, the um, what do we do? <coughs> tools and safety, yeah, okay. Uh, tools and work workplace techniques. The name has changed. Uh, then just uh, then you're fine. Just regular Phillips one and two, uh, Robertson one and two and a miniature screwdriver. Okay. Uh, all right, so what was the question? Let me just go back in chat here. Okay, uh, good question here. Who signs off the customer signature in the lab again? The customer signature is your lab instructor. Okay. Now, because the first one you're doing online, all on your own, obviously, you're not going to have anybody to sign for you. Just put your name there, okay? And that's, uh, that's going to take care of that. And here's the wonderful ring, phone ring. Uh, I love those musical rings. Let me tell you. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, um, what was I going to, uh, where to buy the tools that, uh, that are in the slides? Well, <clears throat> uh, you can buy them at any Home Depot, any Canadian Tire, any um, uh, hardware store. Mm, providing that uh, you can get to them right now. So, <clears throat> mm -hmm. that's all I'm going to say. If you have some troubles, let me know with getting some tools. But really, uh, we're not going to. Uh, the basic thing here get some side cutters. You're going to get side, cutter, side cutters, and you're going to get. Um, Sharpie, yeah. permanent marker. Do I have one here? There it is. These two things. Uh, so most of the time when you do the wire pulling or wire installations, you're going to have side cutters and you're going to have Sharpie and a piece of electrical tape in your pocket when you're ready to do the work. Safety glasses, hard hat, work boots. No work boots required for the labs in our class here. 
but safety glasses are required. And now I cannot give any loaner safety glasses because of the COVID thing. So bring your safety glasses. If you don't have the safety glasses, you're not able to participate in the lab. I am not allowed to have you in class when people work uh, during the lab. How deep at Lowe's have a curbside pickup you need to pre-order? Yeah, that's the, uh, you know, that's the beauty of having COVID, um, quote unquote, beauty, okay? Now, <clears throat> lab one uh, is posted. Now let's just see here. How do we need, how do I know, how do you know how to do the lab one? Okay. Um, labs. Okay, let's just go from the beginning here. Elect, so this is our class portal. We go to content. We go to labs. Lab one starts January 15th at 3 p.m. Okay, so you're going to see you have all the instructions. Let me just uh, remove myself to be a student because at 3 p.m., so in about an hour, it's going to be available for you. Or maybe I should make it available right now. Content, lab one. Edit properties in place. Start date today. Let's make it one thirty update. So that should be available right now. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Um, so let me make myself view as a student again. <laughs> Colors outline no labs. Okay, so it's available now. You can download that. And you're going to have everything explained step by step. Preparation. Okay. Watch this video here. SOW scope of work. Da 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 da. Now I'm going to see. We're going to see you this week. If you have trouble doing this, now it is very simple thing. We're practicing doing deliverables. So go to. I'm going to summarize this lab. Go to content. Student items. Where is it here? Content. Come on. Labs, blank work orders, right here. Print out the blank work order, fill it out by hand. That's one thing. Then what you're going to do is I'm going to ask you to take a picture of anything. Let's say I'm going to take a picture of a dry erase marker. So I'm going to put a dry erase marker I'm going to take a photo of that so it fills the whole screen. Okay, do not have it from like five kilometers away. That there's a dry erase marker. That's your one object. Okay, then I'm going to ask you to take a photo of another object. Let's say it's a remote control. To the remote control, take a photo of that. You got two photos of two objects. Here's the lab report. That's basically, that's what it is. This whole lab. Practicing doing deliverables. You're going to have two pages. Again, page number one is going to be the work order. Page number two is going to have two tables. Yeah. and another table, two tables. In one table, you're going to put a dry erase marker on that, make it big enough, right? And you're going to label that 
dry erase marker. And the other one, you're going to take a picture of the remote control and you're going to label that remote control. That's all I'm asking you to do, practicing the deliverables. And then you're going to have, <clears throat> so you're going to have three, two pages, work order filled out by hand, all the signatures, make the signatures by yourself and two tables as asked, that's all there is. Combine that in Microsoft Word into one file, then save it as PDF. And that's where you're going to uh, submit that, okay? Now, work description. First suggestion for the work description. What have you done? Well, you were asked to take two pictures of two objects, okay? So you can say pictures of two objects taken as per request. So that's one line. Right? Objects labeled as per request. That's all you have to say. See the, 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 the logic behind filling out the art of filling out the work description? Tools used. You can just say a cell phone. You can say actually tools and materials. We're not going to use tools and materials. So we'll just say nothing, just draw a line through it. We're not using tools. Sometimes you're gonna be asked for using tools, but not in this time here, not in this report. Materials used, none. Okay, so just draw a line or just say none or say not applicable. Right. Now, how do you see what you're requested to do? Okay. We go to that and we go to uh, evaluations and you go to submissions. And you see here's lab one deliverables. You click on that and you are going to see the evaluation rubric right away. Or sometimes you can say hide rubrics, or you can say expand rubrics. If not, you can see here. So it's show rubrics, show rubrics. Okay. And here is how this is the rubric of how this lab is going to be evaluated. Okay. So read through that. And that's how I'm going to, we are going to evaluate your lab. When is due, when is it due for the next week? Well, um, let's give you one week to do. So um, it's Friday, let's have it done by the deadline. The deadline for this lab is one minute before midnight, Thursday night. So you have a one week to do it, right? So one minute before, so it's going to be January. January 21st, 11.59 PM, lab one do. Oh, this marker is getting dry here. All right, lab one do. Here. January 21st, which is Thursday, a week from now, 11.59 p.m. So that's the that's the deadline for this lab. Okay. Um, let's see here, it collapsed the calendar here. All right. Um, any other questions? If you can think of them right now. Uh, that's fine. If not, uh, send me an email. Uh, I'll try to answer everything. I hope we covered uh, everything that we needed to. Only subsections. A goes in the lab this week. Oh, okay. Subsections here. Uh, do we have? Do I have the subsections listed? Yes, we do. Let's go here. Um, there is going to be content, student items, 
Okay, then uh, let's collapse the work orders. Labs, uh, lab schedule right here. Okay, so here, you can download that so you can find out which your A or B and whatever section you're scheduled for the day. And at the very last page, you're going to see, um, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. Uh, so week number two, January 18th, only the people who are in the A group are showing up for the labs, okay? Then the week of January 25th, only the people who are uh, in the subsection B are coming to, uh, to the labs, okay? So uh, that's the last page on, on there. You can download that and you can print it. You can keep it in your pocket or you can read it before you go to sleep if you wish, okay? Um, so that's, that's where it is, okay? Any other questions, just, um, um, just send me an email. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you, I'll try to enjoy my day and you enjoy your day and uh, have a great, great term. I know we're going to have a lot of fun and we are going to give you some really, really good content that you can actually use when you go to work. Okay, so that's it for this class. Thank you and have a good day.